I'm Tisha Bader, in for Mark Golub. And in the news, an article published Saturday in the New York Times that has shed some light on the fate of Swedish diplomat and Holocaust hero Raoul Wallenberg. Wallenberg is credited with saving the lives of tens of thousands of Jews in Nazi-occupied Hungary during the Holocaust. He was arrested by the Red Army in 1945, imprisoned and never seen again, with no details about his fate. Joining me now is Danny Reiner, who is vice president of the International Raoul Wallenberg Foundation and the Israeli head of the Israeli representation of the Wallenberg Foundation in Israel. Welcome, Danny. Hi, Tisha. Thank you for having me. Now, earlier this month was Wallenberg's birthday. It would have been his, been his 104th birthday. And I know that um, there was a group from the foundation that marked the occasion in Buenos Aires, Argentina, which is where there is uh, the Wallenberg statue called Hero Without a Grave. Um, were you there, Danny, or were representatives from Israel no, there? No, actually, no, no. We had representatives in Buenos Aires. I, I, I laid a wreath at the, uh, at the Wallenberg Monument in Tel Aviv. And we had also another ceremony, you know, a modest ceremony in New York, close to the United Nations, as we do every, every August 4th and every January 17th, which marks the, the day of the disappearance. Uh, this is something very close to, to our heart. So uh, we do it uh, every year. And how else does the foundation go about keeping the memory of Wallenberg alive? And how, how difficult of a challenge is that to do when you're talking about something that happened quite a while ago um, or educating people about who Raoul Wallenberg was? How do you take on that challenge? First of all, we, we acknowledge that Wallenberg was both a hero and the victim. So we, we try to, to act on those two levels. Uh, and I think that one of the, uh, the main purposes of the, of the Wallenberg Foundation is to try to preserve and spread around the legacy of Raoul Wallenberg, but not only of Raoul Wallenberg, all the people who, who, you know, who acted like him, who didn't stand idly by facing evil. And that refers to all the rescuers of the Holocaust. So we do a lot of research and a lot of uh, education, uh, especially for the young people, because, uh, you know, especially young people need role models, positive role models. And Wallenberg and all the other rescuers, uh, we believe, are uh, very worthy uh, role models. Um, and we extended our chapter not only concerning the Holocaust, but also to other tragic chapters like the Armenian genocide uh, or even other conflicts that uh, unfortunately took place uh, in several corners of, of the world. So the idea is to, to research stories of uh, unknown rescuers and to try to incorporate their stories and their legacies and their feats and to try to instill them in the hearts and minds of, of the young people. That's our mission. Now, I know the foundation is also involved in interfaith programs. Can you talk a bit, give us an example of, of that? Yes, absolutely. We, uh, interfaith is one of the core of, or, of our foundations, and a very good example is in Buenos Aires, because uh, our founder, Baruch Tenenbaum, uh, was born in, in Argentina. He's an Argentinian Jew. Our current chairman is Mr. Eduardo Nekian, also a prominent Argentinian businessman of Armenian descent. And in, in Argentina, where we started our, our activities, uh, one of the beautiful things we did was to, uh, to set up or to erect a, a, a memorial showcase at the Catholic Cathedral in Buenos Aires, uh, in memory of the victims of the Holocaust and also the victims of the two heinous terrorist attacks that took place in Buenos Aires in the decade of 1990. The one against the uh, Israeli embassy and the other against the, uh, the community center, the Jewish community center uh, called AMIA in, in Spanish. Um, and this is actually the only monument uh, which pays tributes to Jews in a Catholic uh, church, let alone a cathedral. Uh, so this is one of our activities. Also in Israel, in the Church of Annunciation, uh, 
uh, we have commissioned the, uh, the painting of a very beautiful fresco by, by uh, Raul Soldi, who was a very famous Argentinian painter. So uh, interface is, is very close to, to our hearts. And I think that the, the, uh, the work of the rescuers has to do with, with the interfaith. Uh, nowadays, one of our flagship programs is called the Houses of Life. And the idea is to identify physical uh, sites in Europe which gave shelter to, uh, to the victims of, of the Nazi persecution and extermination machine. And so far we have found more than 300 houses of life in Italy, in France, in Belgium, in the Netherlands, in Denmark, in Hungary, in Poland, and in Greece. And we are uh, affixing a plaque in each of, uh, each of the buildings. And the idea is not to, to pay tribute to the building, but to the, to the stories, to the people who actually uh, uh, you know, display their, their courage and their spirit of solidarity in those places. And this is also a case of interfaith, because uh, probably 90% of the houses of life uh, are related to, to the Catholic Church, whether churches or board schools, monasteries, convents, etc. Danny, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with as far as the foundation and what it's doing on a daily basis? You know, I, I think in, in, you know, the foundation is, is multi-confessional, it's interfaith, so we have people from all faiths, as you could understand. Our chairman is of Armenian descent, and we also have the Pope and people and Muslims, etc. But, you know, the founder and two founders, Baruch Tenenbaum and the late congressman Tom Lantos, who himself was saved by Raoul Wallenberg, uh, are Jewish. And in, in Judaism, as you well know, there is the principle of Hakarata Tov. How do you say it in English? Recognition uh, of good? Recognizing the good. Acknowledging... Recognizing the good. Yeah. Okay, acknowledging the good. So this, if you ask me in, in two words, what is the mission of, of the Wallenberg Foundation? Is acknowledging the good. And this is what we're doing with Wallenberg and all the people that, uh, you know, reached out to those who were in distress uh, to the plight to other, the plight of other people. So th this is the idea: recognition of good and gratitude. And you mentioned educational programs. Do you actually go into the schools in Israel and do programs with the children, or how does that work? Or you? Yes, actually for, actually for high school uh, uh, pupils, we, uh, we had until one year ago, and now we're trying to renew it, a program called Wallenberg at School, because Wallenberg, quite ironically, is not so well known even in Israel. He's known, but, you know, scarcely known, not, not the way we, we would like it. It's not in the curriculum the way it should be. So uh, for six years, we have been uh, working in... Probably, we gave lectures free of charge, of course, for more than 20,000 high school Israeli students, and, and the same in Argentina. Um, and we're very proud of that. We think education is, is a pillar of, of our foundation. Now, is there anyone left from the Wallenberg family um, itself? Are there any relatives or, or descendants that are... Yes, indeed, and we, we are in good, we're in good connection with them. The closest relative is his half-sister, Nina Lagergren. She is, if I'm not mistaken, 94 years old. We met, it, we met her last in, back in 2014, the U.S. Congress, when Wallenberg was uh, awarded posthumously the uh, Congressional Gold Medal. She's a beautiful lady. Um, she suffered so much, and we were in excellent connection also with her brother, Raul's half-brother. Professor uh, Guy von Dardel. He was a renowned physicist, and he passed away about four years ago, and he devoted his life to bring Raoul back home. Um, and also there are the nieces and nephews, etc. So, yes, there is, uh, there is some family, and we're in very good uh, uh, relationship with them. And I'm glad you brought up the Congressional Medal. Um, what was... That, I know that's something that there was quite uh, important for many years for that to happen. Um, how significant was that being given posthumously to Raoul Wallenberg? 
again, you know, it's another gesture of uh, acknowledging good. So uh, it was very important. Uh, Wallenberg was uh, granted the honorary citizenship uh, of the United States, and this is something that we lobbied and we worked with both uh, both aisles, from the uh, Republican and Democratic uh, parties. Both sides and, of the aisle, yes. Well, both sides. Yeah, forgive both sides of the aisle, and. Um, uh, it was very rewarding, very moving. I was there, and uh, you know, it's like a moment of recognition. And we believe, as I said, you know, artistic manifestations and these kind of ceremonies, you know, getting such an honor from the U.S. Congress, a posthumous honor, unfortunately, but uh, I think it was very important, also for the family. Absolutely, and again, just getting back to the New York Times article, if nothing else, it opens the conversation. Um, again, and hopefully, um, I don't know if you've felt any impact from that article where you are in Tel Aviv, or if the foundation has gotten any phone calls or letters or any sort of, you know, response as far yes, as the I article. Yes, I can see a lot of repercussions, a lot of echoes, and I hope this will create some kind of momentum and maybe persuade the Russian authorities that, you know, we, we're not looking for vengeance or retribution. We think that uh, if there are any remains of Raoul Wallenberg and, and his chauffeur, the Russians should be uh, willing to, you know, to let Raoul go back home and be buried next to his uh, parents, and also for the for Mr. Langfelder. Uh, we have to understand the, the historical context, and of course, uh, nowadays Russia has nothing to do with uh, with the Stalin regime. So uh, I think they should be able to to contribute to reliable information, open up the, the archives. And again, we're not looking for historical retribution, just we want to close a human tragedy. Yes, well, I hope that that is, in fact, what happens and that it doesn't take too much longer. Danny Reiner, Danny Reiner is vice president of the International Raoul Wallenberg Foundation. We thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, and thank you to Ilya Arbit, to Dennis Golan, and to Carol Lilienthal. I'm Tisha Bader, in for Mark Gallup.